Hello, it's Stitcher Giroff here, and welcome to the second episode, but the fifth turn of my multiplayer uh, Dominion's Four series as Citus. I think that's how you uh, pronounce it. Once again, I'm gonna go through this quite quickly as I want to talk as uh, you know the least as possible, preferably with my teeth being really sore. Message from Pangea. They're basically going like, yep, yep, Hel Helheim's powerful, da 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 da. And uh, that also means that if I see Pangea or Helheim, the other one's probably nearby. Very toast, once again, uh, uh, being nice and, uh, you know, casual. I don't know if he's being doing it with every nation. And that, uh, uh, that suspicion that he might be doing with every nation is what keeping me from like going super buddy buddy, which seems he's proposing to do. Richard and Conjuration is complete, so I could summon my black servants now. And we're battling Longshank. Uh, unfortunately, something I didn't actually cut, uh, plan for was that I planned for the army to mainly move at the same pace, but I forgot, since this is like one of my third games, uh, that move and score is based on, like, here, the left, the two number, is for how far you can move, and the world view with all the provinces are in 12 is how many places you move in this little battle map. So they're moving way faster than my other troops because on the right, there's seven of my, the seven action points of my troops goes against the 12 of these villains. So they're attacking alone and eating and not being really good shields as the shield went down on just as my troops got there. So. Uh, just gotta learn to improve. There goes the Falchion here, who didn't really do that much in his own right. Even though he did cost quite a bit. I was just testing out to see how effective he was, and really it's just I have to use these heavy infantries. And they're, rowdy, they're routing now. We win. Easy peasy. This guy dies. Yep, there you go. We found a copper uh, mine. Uh, I was well, actually, we didn't really find it because we didn't search for it. But it's just a random uh, event that happened. That's really nice because that gives us twenty straight gold on top of everything else the province gives me. I don't know if the tw if the twenty straight gold would be better than just giving twenty the income. I've I've no I've read over the man uh, the manual about uh, income and stuff, and that's also like. Uh, helping me choose places where I think I want to build uh, ports, but I just had to quickly go over it again to be able to tell um, uh, whether income's better than, uh, better going through. I think income's worse if you put just added 20 income than rather just give 20 gold straight to me, I, I think. So something interesting here is here's an enemy dominion who actually is different than this dominion over here. Sorry about that. A little interruption once again. <clears throat> but let's talk about the Dominion difference, which means it's two players button head down here. Probably gonna be, uh, we're gonna see a lot of that is between these, the bridges of these two lands. Well, actually, four lands. I don't think the player's gonna be over here. I think he's gonna be over here. And this player is going to be over here. I don't think he's like over in this area because Frigal Force is still free of any um, enemy dominion. So he's going to be in the at least like these. I doubt he's right here because he most. Uh, I, even when I look at my own dominion, I've spread it to the adjacent provinces. So he could be here, 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 here. We're here. I highly, highly doubt right there. Actually, no. It, it would spread, spread to the hidden forest, most likely. So, yeah, one of these four. And if he's the rightmost on here, then 
that means that this player will be farther the way that the far the the farther to the uh, east that the player right down here is, the farther the east that player over here is, probably. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So, <clears throat> now that I know that I have two people uh, down here who are going to be looking to, uh, probably this person just going to uh, say that it's fine to own this, and then we'll look for interest in other places, and this person will take all of this land all the way up to Fergal Forest. I really don't want to get in a uh, fight with this person down here if I can possibly avoid it. And plus they have a, they could uh, have uh, maybe some luck going down here if uh, winter comes around. So I'm just going to focus on my north, uh, west, Turn territories, move, kind of move on to Dimmerel Wood because uh, it's only 30 militia and archers. The archers are the probably the scarier ones because the militiamen really poor attack and defense skill. And my guys will just run them over even when we have half of them. Uh, ha only like a 17 to 30 fight. Um, probably go attack. Well, not, not with this same force, I won't be able to attack in the dim roll. Uh, I'll need backup from uh, these guys before I could continue on. And that would be probably where uh, Conquest with uh, Gohan will stop. Uh, until Balit Balali can catch up. Grab troops. I'm recruiting more heavy infantry and sacred servants because can never have enough standard troops. Finishing my sword master to find more magic sites. I'll come back after conquering this territory up here. I don't know how much I'm gonna conquer. I'll see based on like where people or enemies, uh, other players appear to be. It would be really nice for me to control this choke point. However, controlling that uh, this area right here could be threatening to a person who would be up here if there's one. And I want to come back down and take Thorm, Ravenna, and other provinces. I can't do that if I just have these guys. Uh, if I have my main force uh, just indefinitely trying to look for expansion up here. And um, what else can I go over? I'm changing research to alteration because all the way up to um, level five, it looks really nice. Uh, it's, well, it, it could it, nice is like a word that just says that it looks better than this, and it looks better than um, and not enchantment, of course. Death enchantment is really good, and thaumaturgy, and obviously blood magic. Uh, conjuration and enchantment hold a lot. Uh, enchantment, uh, the or skeletons be nice. And, um, where's the yeah, your life after death is also really, really powerful. But I've only seen things, I haven't really implemented them too much, so I really shouldn't be giving my input without. Uh, first making a, some good tests with it. So, Conjuration, all the way up to Summon Ghosts, it's nice. A lot of, uh, a lot of castable spells. However, some of them are meh, like, well, I can't cast the corpse candles. The ghost grips is also meh. Death enchantment, of course. That's where you get all your raising of the raising of the dead. And in alteration, a lot of adverse effects I can cause on my enemies. Enfeebling them and giving them vulnerability. For someone, if I want to uh, 
if I would want to put, what is it, like a, a caster, a uh, Sauromancer into um, the Arena Deathmatch with the vulnerability would probably be really effective. And then Drain Life for two, if I'm willing to throw up uh, the extra um, edge, uh, the extra things to increase magic. So I'm pretty sure Sauromancers are not going to start out with... Um, Oh no, they could. They could start out with four death. And yeah. What else? Mercenaries, very toast, uh, crude the black fists. I'm not gonna bid on the Arnod archers. Um no real army sub, max set plan. The setups are the exact same. Over here, I'm moving the front because my belief is I I don't know if this is right or not, but I believe that the farther they are front, the farther that they'll um the closer they'll be the enemies when the ma when the um the battle starts, which is nice against uh true uh forces with archers because that means less time that uh less turns that the archers get to constantly fire upon us. However, if I just put it all on the back. Uh, the archers might move. Uh, would move up with the guy. Yep, uh, that would, I think, be the best way of decreasing um, archer casualties. And um, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, Hall of Fame. My uh, Balit Balali uh, prophet guy is no longer in the Hall of Fame, and Victor died because I just used him as a meat shield ineffectively. And Helheim has three Hall of Famers. Interesting. Kale in one, Baritos one, some neutrals. Actually, Baritos two, because only because he hired the mercenary Sir Edward Blackfist. Korath, Nation View, Thrones of Ascension. Do 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 do. And yeah, this is my turn. Moving the main army back up, grabbing units. Go and go for Northwestern Conquest. See you guys later.